Welcome back to Life of Fork. On today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make steamed rice in my new, brand new sushi rice cooker. So stay tuned. If you're like me, you like making rice. I love rice. Right now, especially with my diet, rice is really important. I almost eat, I would say about four cups to six cups of rice a week. I was raised in culinary school and in most kitchens to cook rice on the stove. And I've been doing that since God knows how long. And it's always been okay, no issues, no problems. Rice always comes out nice and fluffy, uh, very adequate, very nice. But lately I was, you know, kind of having issues because all the rice blends are different now. So if you use the same proportion, two to one water to rice, it, it wasn't coming out right. And then now with the meal prep company, Booty and the Chef, make sure you check that out. Uh, it's been an issue. You know, uh, we're doing about, I would say, on a, on a constant base, about 10 cups of cooked rice per day. So to cook all that rice on the stove would be, yeah, it'd be easy, but at the same point, it'd be very tedious. So I had to figure out a way to make it more easier on myself and less worry and watching and making sure it's consistent. That's the most important part, making sure the rice always came out the same. So I purchased uh, the Neurofuzi Zujiri Sushi uh, rice cooker. I found this one on eBay uh, used for about $80. This is a 10 cup dry weight uh, rice cooker. Now that's where you have to be careful. It's 10 cups dry weight. So that would make a little bit more, but just so you know. So I bought this and I'm gonna show you how I use it and how easy it is now to make rice. Of course, we're not gonna make 10 cups, but we'll do about maybe two cups just so you can see you can do any uh, volume. All right, so the rice I'm gonna use is your, your basic white rice. Uh, this rice is not pre-washed, so that's something you must take into consideration. So I'm gonna show you how we wash it. Now, the one thing with Japanese rice cookers is our measurements don't convert the same way. A cup here is not a cup for them in sense of this. This bowl has markings on it where it shows you how much rice has to be put in. For white rice, you've got to follow the measurements to water ratio. So, what I figured out is one cup to their specifications, three quarters cup US. So we'll make about uh, two cups there. So it's a uh, what is that, uh, one and a half cups ours. So first you're gonna take one and a half cups. Put it inside your bowl. Now we're gonna wash the rice. So again, the rice is already in here. We're gonna add some cold water. You're gonna use your hands. By using my hand, I'm whisking it around, trying to get all the rice nice and clean. I'm gonna pour it out, and what I'm looking to pour out is all that starch that's on top of the rice. I'm gonna keep on doing this process until the rice is 100% clear water. Clear water will tell me that the rice has been washed thoroughly enough to cook it. See here you can see the water is nice and clear already, so we're just going to pour that out. Now we're gonna fill up to the water line. So we said this is two cups rice, so we're gonna fill up right onto the two. There you go. Now that the rice has been washed and it's been filled to the desired mark, like I said, we're doing two cups, so I filled it up to two cups on the line that's inside the bowl. So it makes it very easy so you don't mess this up. This bowl goes in. The cool thing about this bowl, it has these little grips on the side, so when it gets hot, you don't burn yourself. So all you're gonna do is close it and hit cook. 
It's already set to regular white rice. The cool thing about this machine is it does brown rice, it does sushi rice, so if you want it a little bit softer, stickier, you can add that setting. But for this, we're just doing the basic white rice. So you hit cook and let it go. That's the awesome part. So while you're doing this, you can do other stuff. So in a little bit, it'll be done. So the rice is almost done at this point. It says three minutes on the rice cooker. It took about 30 minutes. The only thing I've noticed with cooking rice in a rice cooker, it depends on the quantity you're cooking. It might take a little bit longer. When I did 10 cups, it was about 45 minutes. So it's not bad. This is 30 minutes and it's gonna be perfectly dry. What it does is it has a condenser in the top and a condenser in the bottom. So it heats evenly both ways. That way you can make sure that there's no water left in your rice. It maintains it perfectly moist. It's the technology they call NeuroFuzi. I hope I said that right, but it really makes a big difference because sometimes what you'll notice when you cook rice on the stove is that there's a little bit of water left on the bottom. That could be bad or it's too dry and now it becomes really crispy. So since it's an induction kind of cooking technique, it makes sure that it's perfectly all the way around. So in three minutes, this thing's gonna beep. It's gonna make a noise. Like, ee -ee -ee -ee. And I'm bad at making the noise, but it's gonna make a noise letting you know it's done. At that point, it'll go into what is called a holding temperature. So it'll just keep it nice and warm. You can keep this in this kind of rice cooker for about a day warm. I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, there's nothing that's gonna go wrong since the temperature maintains it. And actually I've tried it and it doesn't dry out. So it's not bad. It's just, I like my rice, either if I'm gonna eat it that day, nicely, freshly cooked. Sometimes what I also do is I throw it in the fridge and let it dry out a little bit. And then the next day you can, you know, saute it up almost like a fried rice, but a healthy variation with a little bit of coconut oil, some scallions, some chicken, some eggs, whatever you're, you're trying to add for your diet, of course. But this has really helped me so much with my diet and how easy it is to just have rice freshly cooked all the time. So like I said, in about two minutes, this thing's gonna beep. At that point, what I'm gonna do is take a fork and just go around it, making sure not to scratch the bowl because you'll lose the anti-stick coating that's on it. But you could also use a rice spoon. I don't have one yet. I'm probably gonna invest in one soon but then you can use your wooden spoon to you know, put it in your plate and then you just eat it nice and fresh. You, at this at, doesn't have any salt, so you can add a, bit, a little bit of salt or some seaweed seasoning. If you wanna keep it you know, nice and sushi themed and give it that nice little sparkle. But I mean, you can eat it just steamed the way it is. Like I said, I hope this video helped you a little bit to see how easy it is to just make your own steamed rice at home. I mean, you don't need such a fancy one. You can get just a basic rice cooker, but they all usually work about the same. I would say stay in the price point of $50 to a maximum of $150. After that, you're just paying for things that you're never gonna use. I mean, I already did the sushi rice in this to make fresh sushi, and I have already used it for steamed rice for the meal prep company and for myself. And I can say it's probably one of the better investments I've made in my kitchen for a kitchen appliance equipment that I use all the time. See, there you go, now you hear it. That's a nice little sound and it lets you know it's done. Now I'm gonna open it and you're gonna to get to see how this rice looks. So just by pressing on the button, you can see a steam comes out. Now it's 100% cooked. Like I said, I'm gonna use my fork to go around the rim. Now, with my wooden spoon, I'm just gonna put some in my bowl. You can see how beautiful the rice is. I mean, it's re not dry at all. I mean, it actually is really moist, soft. I mean, it sticks to the fork just like how you'd want it. 
comes out really good, just nice and soft. So there you go. So I hope this video really helped you. As you can see, it's just very simple technique to get perfect rice every single time. So uh, going forward, leave me any comments, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell so you get reminders of when new videos get released. I'm uh, open for new ideas for content and stuff like that. I'm also open to collab if you're interested in that, you know, coming up with two channels and making something really cool. Let me know. Uh, inbox me, message me, comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. If you want to do something, we're in the Chicago area. So anything around here I can work with. As always, till next week, love you guys. Take it easy. Bye.